we're going to turn to the book of Ephesians in the fourth chapter. I'm going to read a text here and then see what the Lord has for us in his word. Amen. Paul, of course, writing to the saints at Ephesus. And uh, as you know, the Ephesus, the church at Ephesus is, uh, if I understand it right, is predominantly Gentile. Uh, however, Paul, in his missionary journeys, would preach to the Jews and Gentiles. Uh, he showed no respect to persons, but uh, uh, just, that's just the way the world is. Uh, you have communities and and ethnic type communities and racial type communities and in other words man not God but man divides themselves and and you have uh, a place for the white folks to go and a place for the black folks to go and and uh, a place for the Jews to be and a place for the Gentiles to be and but in Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus, he writes concerning that very thing. And uh, so his, his main theme throughout the whole book of, of Ephesians is his, his main theme is unity. Unity of the spirit. Unity of the people. Amen. Unity of what we're teaching and preaching Unity of, uh, of the Gentile uh, and, the, and the Jew that are, that are saved and in the church that we need to exercise uh, the wisdom and the power of God in our lives that we will be as one, that we will be striving as one people. And he, let, me, let me read it here. He, we pick it up in the fourth chapter and the... 17th verse. And Paul is, continues to write and says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth, or from now on, we walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness but ye have not so learned Christ if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Say amen to the reading. Yes, Paul is... Reminding the saints at Ephesus where they, where God has brought them from and where God has put them, amen. That indeed he describes uh, conditions existing back there at that time. And he shows a reflection of of what the what the saints of God were, Amen. Some this is what you were at some time, but now, Amen. That the conditions of the world, and and so we look at our day, we look at our times, and you would have thought, Amen. If if this is the first time you'd ever read this. Or the first time you, you had been presented this uh, this uh, text that uh, Paul is writing, you would have thought he's talking about our day. He's talking about our times. 
He's talking about the conditions that exist in our world, how people are behaving themselves today. Amen. Yet this was 2,000 years ago. This was written to a people that was 2,000 years ago. But it sure looks like and sounds like he's talking to us. Amen. Well, I got good news for you. He is. Amen. He is. Amen. Yes, this text, amen, fit their day. This was indeed, Paul was stating the truth. Paul was stating the conditions that indeed existed at that time. But the way the word of God is, amen, it's a wonder to start with. The word of God is a wonder and a how God can speak something through his preacher, his prophet, amen, 2,000 years ago, amen. It would fit their day, but it would fit our day as well, amen. We living in such terrible times, spiritually speaking, amen, times, amen, of flesh, we're living in the times like as in the days back there in Paul's world, Paul's times, amen. But he is then reminding the saints at Ephesus of where God has brought them from and that we ought to strive in our best ability, amen, to separate ourselves from that which what we were, that we are to separate ourselves, uh, amen, for the ways the world is living and, and, and behaving and thinking, amen, and, and, and the, the mind without God in their, in their minds. They've become reprobate, as Paul said in another place, uh, because they had not uh, put God or kept God in their mind. And so they don't believe in the power of God. They don't even know anything about the power of God. Amen. They have denied the knowledge of God in their hearts and their minds. Amen. And committed themselves not only to be like that themselves, but to teach their children as well. Amen. My, it looks like just this week's news program, amen, and the headlines that are making the news because uh, there's still people who are resisting this, amen, and fighting against these things, amen, and there is some uh, still upholding, amen, at least to some extent, uh, amen, uh, that there is a God, amen, there is a morality, that we ought to take heed to and live, amen. Uh, there is, uh, it's even common sense, I heard one newscaster say. It's only common sense, amen, that there is male and female, amen. Even nature teaches us things, amen, that, are, uh, that, that they're living contrary Amen. And teaching contrary against even nature itself, that which God has created himself. Amen. And you scratch your head and wonder, how could they believe such things? Well, it's evident that these ideas are coming from a higher source uh, or a po more powerful source than man. We, we, but we as saints of God, we, we that know the Lord, uh, we know also that God has made us to realize and to know that there is a spirit out there that's not of God. Amen. There is a force out there that's not supported by God. Amen. We know that there is a satanic movement, amen, in this world. It has always been since the garden. Amen. We know the enemy. The church knows the enemy. The church recognizes the enemy. Amen. Because God is in the church. 
And God reveals to us uh, these things and thoughts. Uh, Paul is writing. He took pen in hand and wrote to the church. Amen. And to, to these things. Uh, amen. Warning us and preparing us and admonishing us when necessary. Amen. The dangers uh, that, are, uh, that are in our world, amen, uh, that they, we have the dangers of these false uh, teachings, amen, that are going forth, amen, and it's not just, it's not just those who are easily recognized as evil folks, but the scripture said that Satan will appear as an angel of light. Amen. So sometimes, amen, these things uh, are coming from a direction of what might appear to be good and are not. That's a dangerous thing because they can deceive you. When you're deceived, amen, you think you're right when you're wrong. You think it's okay when it's not. It's Right, but it's not. Amen. But Paul gives us his word. Amen. I mean, he lets us know that the writings of the word of God will reveal these things. Amen. We, it's important that we embrace the word of God. Amen. That we trust in the word of God. That we depend upon the word of God. That we uh, learn from the word of God uh, and that having learned we teach others in the word of God uh, we, we're living in such times and Jesus said that with, uh, these times have come and that when, when we see these things take place when we see these things happen he said well, you need to begin to look up for your redemption draw it nigh Amen. But Paul, in, in, in speaking to that, I'd like to read this again in verse 22. And he said, that you put off concerning the former conversation. We need to put off that evil and wicked life that we used to live. Amen. You see, Paul is writing to converts. Paul is writing to people who were lost, who were in sin. But he said, you got to put off concerning the former conversation or the former lifestyle, amen, the way you used to be, the things you used to do, amen, the things that were contrary to the word of God and true holiness. Uh, he said, you have to put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, if you will. We all have the old man. All of us have the old man in us. Amen. Male and female. Male and female. We all have that old man. Amen. That we by the power of God, have to put off concerning the old things of this old man, even as he said, and which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Amen. These lusts, amen, they appear to be good. They appear to be right. Amen. But they're not. Amen. And so we know these things because God has said, Thus and thus. Amen. They're saying it's all right to do this and do that, but that's not what God's word says. Amen. We got to put off those things that our fellow man is trying to deceive us into thinking and believing. It's all right. Amen. To marry. Amen. Of the same sex. It's all right. Amen. To teach your children that they have a choice as to whether they want to be a boy or a girl. Uh, amen. But God's word is totally against all of that. Uh, amen. But it is presented to us 
and the pressures that's behind that. He said, but we've got to put this thing off. We've got to put this off. Amen. Don't allow this to, 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 to persuade you. Don't be confused. Amen. And puzzled at what they're saying is good when it's not. Amen. He said, you be renewed. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. We have to have that spirit of God within us. We have to be renewed by the spirit and the power of God. Our mind, you see, that's where the battle is, is being fought. It's not out there uh, uh, on the battlefield such as we know battlefields. Amen. Out there in the world, uh, this is playing going on right here. Right here. Amen. Because we hear the reports. We hear of the, of the things that are being uh, accepted, amen. And think about it now. The things we're seeing and observing today, how does it look compared to 20 years ago? And 20 years is not that long. How does it look compared to 20 years ago? Can you imagine the things that are being accepted and things that are being celebrated and the things that are being applauded and the things that are, are, are being spoken in the way that even they're passing laws in our government, uh, amen, to support these things. Can you imagine 20 years ago what they would have thought? Amen. That just goes to show what's going on. There is a force. It's changing the way people think Amen. There's, there's a force that's denying God and the power of God. Amen. We have to recognize these things. Paul said we've got to put these things off and we have to put on. As he said, you put on the new man. The new man. When he's saying new man, he's talking about the man, amen, that God has made you to be, that God has created in you. Amen. We are a new creature in Christ. We are a new creature in Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new to the child of God, to the saint of God. Amen. And you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. Amen. Feels good in here today. Amen. It feels like we're free. Amen. In here today. It feels like there is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. In here today. It feels like we have something to shout about because God has saved us. God has come into our hearts. Our minds are saturated with the spirit and the power of God. Amen. That makes me want to say there is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. And, 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 and we're not boasting uh, in, a, in an ungodly way, but we're boasting in the Lord because we know what we were. And we can see what the world is. Amen. And we can see what God has shown us and provided to us. Amen. I'm just glad to be saved. Amen. Yes, I've heard it uh, all my life. And, I, and it's been true every time I, every time I've seen it. Amen. What's this world coming to? Every generation that I know of has said that. Amen. Amen. And, 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 but you know what? It's as true today as it was back there when it was first spoken. What is this world coming to? Well, God has an answer to that question. Amen. God has an answer to that question. It's in his book. Everybody's got a book nowadays. Amen. But none of them will compare with this. 
Amen. God has a book. Amen. And uh, uh, guess what? You're in it. Amen. You're in it. Because one of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. Amen. One of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then they that which remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. That's what our joy is, is about. Amen. That is what we're pressing for. That's what we're trusting God in. That's why we're walking as we walk in the Lord. That's why we're uh, trying to get everybody and anybody saved. Uh, amen. That are lost and undone such what, as what we were. Amen. But that's what we were the day we're saved and sanctified. Baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 